When PUBG first came out, for many it was their first introduction to an all new genre of games, the Battle Royale. It certainly was for younger me. When I watched the first video about this game, I was fascinated. But to be fair, what adolescent boy wouldn't be interested in something that's basically a gladiatorial battle on steroids? And ever since that moment, I have wondered how many people live on that oh so memorable original map of PUBG. So I guess there's nothing to do but count the entire population. Normally I do this by counting houses, looking up an average amount of people that live in those houses and multiplying the two to get the population. That of course excludes the homeless and the other people that might not live in a house permanently, but statistically speaking those groups are very small. Specifically in PUBG, these people are basically a non-factor. I'll start the counting process with a small town and work my way up to the biggest cities. And I'll begin with this tiny town called Gatka, whose name is absolutely hilariously accurate, at least in Dutch, because the word Gat translates to something like the small town that's completely irrelevant and technologically backwards. And next to this town being small, for the few houses that do exist, it looks like time has stood still since, well, about the 1950s. Oh wait a second, no, um, this is just Russia. <laughs> well, at least we now know whom's population figures to use. After a short count, it turned out that the town only has 9 houses, which translates into a population of 30 people. The next town I would like to take a look at is not really a town at all. It's a collection of apartment buildings near this school, which I think are supposed to be a sad communist excuse for a dormitory. But if we then go inside, we can see that it's just a regular depressing apartment. These buildings all have the exact same layout as all the other apartment buildings in the game. Two apartments per floor, with two or three floors per building. And now I know for sure this is Russia, because only the Russians are able to make something that should be quite cozy, like an apartment complex where you live close together and turn it into such a depressing mess that quite honestly these tents are starting to look quite attractive. But from this layout I have to assume that these apartments are unrelated to the school. Or the game developers have been a little lazy. Modeled one apartment, looked at their inspiration and said Close enough, let's call it a day. Let's go out for a fucking bottle of vodka. And something tells me it's that second option. In total, there's six apartments here, with 33 apartments inside of them. Which means a population of 96 people. Now on to the first normally sized town in the game, Milta. And it was here that my previous assumptions of the game developers being a, a tad bit lazy were confirmed. Because here I found a bunch of houses that uh, had more than a canny resemblance to the ones I found before. And with that I mean they were literally exactly the same. Which is great for me, because this little fact made the counting job quite a little bit easier. There were only two real outliers I could find. This house with two apartments inside, and this little scammer that suggests it has a house on top of the store. Fuck you, bitch. Despite those inconveniently designed outliers, this discovery still greatly improved my quality of life. Speaking of quality of life, damn, this town is uh, not very beautiful. Throughout the town, there's just a bunch of random nonsense everywhere, like this and this thing. And as you can see on this map, Milta has also quite some houses, 36 to be precise which means a population of 119. Now luckily for our sanity, there are also some not completely depressing towns in PUBG. Zaki over here is the nicest I could find. For one, take the landscape around the town. It's not just a bunch of grass. It's an actual forest with a bunch of grass. I know, it's not actually what a forest looks like, but hey, at least they tried. And when we go to the town itself, you will immediately note the town is not full of a bunch of random bullshit, but mostly with actual houses and house related things. And it's got a beach. It's almost like this place is a little bit of a semi well designed game map in a sea of well, um, this. And how many lucky few would call this town home? Just a 99 people. And now we arrive at by far the most annoying town I had to count, Pachinki. Despite the fact it took me an ungodly amount of tries to count this town, the size of Pachinki is not actually the reason I wanted to pull out my hair nearing the end of the survey of this town. Now what made this town stupendously difficult to count was the fact that it is smack dab in the middle of the map. 
meaning the plane would fly over it every single goddamn time. Which resulted in uh, peaceful me counting and counting and... Despite this challenge, I did manage to count it down. It's got a population of 185 people. And now we have arrived at the two biggest towns on the entire map. And if you ask me, the only two true cities. I'll start with the smaller Yasnaya Polinyaya. This town is by far the most lively and diverse of any in the map. It's got everything. Shops, restaurants, churches, neighborhoods with normal houses and apartment complexes. Also something I think is a police station and even a government building. And on top of that, the city is also kinda laid out like a city, with a central road and a few small roads going off, of course in typical Russian fashion, ending up in even smaller unpaved streets. All in all, this town feels, whilst not alive, quite lively. In total, it's got room for a little over 350 people. Weirdly enough, this niceness does not scale. Cause when we go over to the largest city in game, Georgia Paul, I can immediately note this city is dead as all balls. It's just got rows and rows of apartments with nothing you would think there should be in a city. Like no sidewalk, no car racks like there were in the previous city. Nothing but rows and rows of copy pasted houses. This just makes the entire town feel like it's completely sterile. So if we take into account that, uh, combined with its location at the edge of the map, it's no wonder I did not find a single sign of life while strolling through to count the city. It's just a completely unappealing and boring place to land. So paradoxically, the city with the least amount of people has the highest population, at nearly 800. Despite the peace and quiet, it did take me quite a long time to count, but not anywhere near as long as what still remained, the rest of the map. I still had to count every tiny little compound I'd skipped over until now. And I thought, sure it's a lot, but it's easy, so I'll mop this up in like an afternoon. But due to my good old friend, The Circle, the game uh, mopped up my sanity instead. Luckily I did get them counted eventually. I divided the map in six regions, and this is what I counted for each of those, excluding all of the cities. And before I forget, I of course did not have time to include every town in this video. So here are the towns that I did not yet mention earlier, to complete out the count. But hey, we do now have everything, so on to the totals. In total, I counted around enough living space for 4300 people. Which honestly, is way less than I thought there would be. Like, especially that last part of the search made this whole thing almost as long as the GTA 5 video. Okay, it was not quite that bad, but it felt like a whole lot more than 4300 people. And now it's time for some fun facts about the map of PUBG. And the first thing I would like to say is that I don't really have any. Across my search, I've come to the conclusion that my favorite PUBG map that I held so high is just not all that interesting. Sure, there's quite some interesting one-off locations, but as far as one-off locations go, they're relatively standard things like a prison and a mansion. And still, the game is weirdly enough as popular as it's ever been. And even more weird, I've wanted to play this game more because of the counting, not less. And I think I know why. The map might not be very lively, but I don't think it needs to be. I think the relative deadness and the repetitive and eerie choice of architecture go great with a game that is supposed to be, well, a brutal battle to the death. Take only this house design. I've been in this house with the big garage downstairs and living space upstairs so many times I can dream its blueprint. But still, I feel anxious going up the stairs because I could get shot at any moment. The empty fields of grassland between the towns might look very boring, but combined with the fact that you get your ass burned off if you sit still too long, it kind of forces you to take note and be in awe of how big the map actually is. You, you know, you actually need a car to not die. I also think from a gameplay perspective it's way more fun if your opponents can't hide in every little tiny nook and cranny of the game. So paradoxically, the on the face sterile design of the map might just be the thing that makes the game so memorable in the first place. After all, it was the never ending danger and excitement that first captured, well, at least my attention. And on that note, I think I'm going to leave this video. Man, this is gonna be a monster to edit. 
But hey, I certainly don't care as much about that anymore, because I don't know how it is at this moment, but when I recorded this video, two of the population videos have picked up some serious steam, which I'm extremely happy with. And they're like two of the ones I'm most proud of too, so I'm extremely happy with that. So if you come straight from there, welcome to the channel, uh, nice to have you. Feel free to stick around. It might take me a while, but uh, I have many plans for more of these and similar types of videos in the future. So I certainly hope this uh, video has delivered a minor dosage of nostalgia for you. Either way, hopefully see you next week. Bye bye.